something new and rather unusual is happening in the pristine marine sanctuary at the Hawkman and Rollis Islands off the coast of Western Australia. Along the seabed, more than 50 crates full of rocks, called live rocks, are now appearing. And while around the world events like wide-scale bleaching are wiping out coral reefs and the ecosystems that they support, it seems that though these rocks are coming alive. So what can these live rocks do to relieve one of the biggest threats faced by natural reef? In the nearby coastal city of Geraldton, a team from the Batavia Coast Maritime Institute are preparing for a voyage to the islands. On board is Eugene Whitby, one of the Baba Mata live rock team. They are preparing to check the progress of a batch of man-made living rock that's been at the islands for two years. The rocks provide a light, semi-porous substrate for the beginnings of a natural coral reef and have undergone extensive tests at the Batavia Coast Maritime Institute. Baba Mata and BCMI have been making regular trips to the islands, delivering, checking on and refining the man-made substrate, which Baba Mata believes has the potential to revive the world's natural coral reefs. Before the man-made rocks can be taken to the islands, the process of preparing them takes place at BCMI. So out here we have a number of tanks that are uh, being leased by uh, Baba Mata for their their purging of their uh, rock prior to it going out into the ocean. Um, we can determine when the, the purging process is finished and uh, leaching of, um, in this case particularly bicarbonate, out of the, uh, the rock is complete. At that point the rock is deemed to be suitable to go out to the, uh, to the site. Dr Colin Johnson, Research and Development Officer at BCMI, knows how serious the issues facing the ocean's coral reefs are. Coral reefs worldwide are facing a number of challenges. Um, the increasing sea surface temperatures that have been recorded recently lead to, um, can lead to wide-scale leaching events that uh, cause coral to weaken and in many cases die as a result of um, expelling their symbiotic algae. On top of this we have pollution events, uh, harvesting. All of these things are um, impacting adversely on natural coral reefs. Baba Mata has been uh, investigating the, the opportunity to um, use some of their substrate to help uh, recreate some of these damaged reefs and provide a suitable substrate to allow settlement of um, incoming larvae. At the same time, one of the big focuses that uh, Baba Mata has for the future is to optimise uh, their substrate to make it a suitable thing to increase the the speed at which any artificial reef structures will become um, colonised. When Eugene and the BCMI crew return from the Abrolis, this is what they bring with them. So far their progress has been steady and successful. Their substrate is showing potential to make significant differences on a large scale. As an aquarium product, it has a massive potential to supply a market that's otherwise degrading the reef. On a larger scale, it's going to have potential only if it's done on a massive scale and the substrate itself can be definitively proven to optimise settlement. But the live rocks are not just limited to reef repair and offsetting wild rock removal. This is something that could be used for the manufacture of break walls and so on um, to have substrate below the waterline that's um, built in such a manner that will optimise settlement. Um, also for things such as uh, wharves and even oil platforms and those sorts of structures or also for mine rehabilitation or mining rehabilitation. Restoration work on degraded reefs can only be a good thing. Um, so every bit that, that is done will be beneficial. To further develop their live rock, Baba Mata needs time, manpower and funding. Large scale production is needed but one thing the Baba Mata team know all too well is that we must act today because tomorrow may be too late.